You're watching Coping with COVID-19 with Chris Manners. Today's special guest is Dr. Suzanne Gerardo. Hi, I'm Chris Manners and you're watching Coping with COVID-19. Today my guest is Dr. Susan Gerardo. She's the clinical director of the Kalmanowitz Child Development Center at the California Pacific Medical Center and one of the co-authors of Disaster Shock, How to Cope with the Emotional Stress of a Major Disaster. She's here today to talk to us about how to help young children cope with this ongoing pandemic. Dr. Gerardo, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Let's start by talking about some of the issues that five to 11 year olds might be facing. What are some of the difficulties they might be experiencing during this pandemic? The biggest difficulties that um, all children experience is fear and anxiety. And the, it's displayed in a variety of different ways. The kids have a fear of a family member getting sick or themselves getting sick. They have a fear of separation. Obviously, with um, our quarantine, all of us at home, children still have a fear of separation in their own homes, which means from room to room, from floor to floor of the home, that they cannot be alone without a parent. It's very difficult, and even at night, uh, to sleep in their own bed can be a problem and an issue um, that is under the umbrella of anxiety. The um, other part that plays into it is uh, the anxiety of when will this end? And as we all know currently, we don't know. And I think that's the most uh, difficult. And all kids, their peers, are an important part of their development. So it's often asking, when can I go to school? They're, at this point, very tired of online school. When can I see my friends? And when can I see extended family? Right. What type of behaviors might indicate that a young child is struggling right now? What should we look for? Particular behaviors that are really across the age spectrum of five to adolescence is sleep disturbances and an increase in nightmares and in the younger kids, uh, night terrors. We see again across the whole age spectrum, fear of the dark. The other behaviors that we are seeing is the regression in their normal developmental tasks for the younger child, such as toileting, and as I referenced, sleeping in their own room. Um, other types of behaviors that parents or caregivers might see are meltdowns over relatively minor issues. Often we're seeing, um, as well, decreased attention and focus, especially with online school. We're also seeing um, physical symptoms as well, headaches, stomach aches that we typically see when there is stress and trauma. I see. Let's say we've realized a child is having difficulties. Are there specific ways we can talk to them to get them to open up, perhaps phrases or ways to ask questions that will encourage them to share their concerns? There are a number of ways. Number one, the biggest thing that parents can do is to really listen to their child. Oftentimes we're, we're rushed, uh, we're working parents, plus as well as now teachers um, online, uh, as well as playmates. So to pause and really listen to what their fears are. As parents, we often don't stop, get down to a younger child's physical level look at them and listen to them and talk to them directly. I often use the uh, technique of um, naming a feeling. And kids, oftentimes, they're not going to, especially in times of stress, come up with the feeling that they can name. So I recommend to parents always of naming three feelings, happy, sad, and mad, and using those three, not frustration, but just nailing it to those three. Another uh, technique that I highly recommend is to use the third person um, in 
a way such as, I have heard other kids say that they're scared and they don't know why they're scared. Do you think that happens with you sometimes? This is a way that kids feel much safer in being able to talk about their feelings because they don't feel like they're on the spot, but other kids are feeling the same way. I understand. Do you think that there will be a set of secondary concerns for kids as restrictions are gradually lifted? I know one small child who's frightened to go outside right now. Yes, and we're seeing that already right now because with in right as one as restrictions are lifted and we're able to go outside, um, you know, people are wearing masks and that can be very frightening. Even at Halloween, many kids won't wear a mask. Children under two do not wear masks. Under seven, they don't have to. But over the age of seven, it's highly recommended uh, by the CDC that kids wear masks. That's going to be um, difficult. So what I've recommended is for kids to make their own masks. They can make their own design on the paper surgical masks. And so it's there. They can put stickers on it, whatever makes it feel a lot safer for them. Um, other things that I have heard are kids are afraid to go outside. I've heard this from a number of families because they haven't really been able to do so, so they're afraid they're going to get sick. Um, I recommend that families start very small steps. And the first step is take a ride in the car. That's the first way to go outside, windows down, stop someplace. And if you have a sunroof, open the sunroof and unbuckle the seat belts or car seat and be able to stand up. And that is a small step to feel like the outside might be safe. So it's got to be in small steps or the fear is going to be exacerbated. Absolutely. So could you tell me a little bit about your book, Disaster Shock? Yes, Disaster Shock has been, was originally um, written for uh, the large, the 1989 earthquake in San Francisco. Um, since there's been a number of disasters since then, and families in 1989 gave us the feedback that it was extremely helpful because there was really no literature available um, on how to help children and families and how to talk to them. Unfortunately, our natural disasters increased with uh, tornadoes and uh, the last wildfires, in fact, in Northern California. It's been updated and then again for the pandemic. Right. And finally, what would you say to parents about how to talk to their kids about this in general? Can you suggest some good ways to reassure them? A few ways that I have been suggesting is, number one, you've got to be honest about what you know and be able to explain in developmentally appropriate terms um, what is happening and that we are all learning. We don't know. There are many things we don't know, um, but that parents need to reassure the kids that they are safe, that the family will be together but they need to be able to give the kids a, um, a little leeway, so to speak. And um, I'm not saying not to discipline, but what your discipline techniques may have been before may need to lighten up a little bit because these are very unusual circumstances um, for adults, but as well as for kids. But I always suggest and recommend the parents be honest with the kids because that's the trust then that children have in their parents. Parents must be really um, aware their kids will hear, they will read their body language and understand the anxiety we all feel, but the parents need to be honest that they, the kids will be safe. I understand. Well, thanks for coming on the show, Dr. Gerardo. I really appreciate the time you've given us today. Thanks again. You're very welcome. And that's it for this episode. We'll be back with more pandemic-related information shortly. You've been watching Coping with COVID-19. For SFGov TV, I'm Chris Manners. Thanks for watching.